Okay guys, TNA Impact Wrestling Review for May 17th, 2012. Um, before I start, I noticed that throughout this entire show they were using the Dictator movie to play lead into clips of Impact. So, for those who are interested, I do have a review of the movie The Dictator Up that I went and saw on Wednesday, so you can check that out if you're interested. Um, like last week, before I get started, there's some news I want to go through. Uh, the first thing, just a few small clips of stuff. I've read is Tony Nese was fired. Um, not that it's a big deal they didn't use him anyway, but I mean there's just another X Division guy gone. So just thought I would mention that. Um, also TNA in a couple weeks is going to move to its 8 o'clock time slot uh, from 8 to 10 now instead of 9 to 11. And they also have this plan to go live during the summer. So they're going to make the show live now, like Monday Night Raw, which I think is a good thing for TNA because some people may just have interest in the company and read the spoilers and say, ah, oh, that doesn't sound good, I'm not going to watch. So if the people who do that now have to tune in, it could actually help TNA. Will they still like the show and stick around? Who knows? That's up for TNA to keep those viewers, but I think it could help them get some viewers. Uh, also, another big news is Raw is going three hours every Monday starting in July. Uh, I think this is a bad idea. Uh, if all the shows were being were awesome and Raw was doing great, great numbers and it was just bringing in tons of viewers because of how great the shows were, that's one thing. But Raw hasn't been doing that great numbers wise and to be honest, last, week, last week's show was only two hours and it kind of sucked in my opinion. So, yes, I don't think this is a good idea for Raw. They need to focus more on improving the storylines they already have rather than trying to put more crap in. I mean, we already have so many filler matches and guys just putting tag team matches for no reason. So, if it moves to three hours, I expect to see way more of that type of crap. Oh, and the last one is Brooke Hogan is now a part of TNA. Uh, this is complete shit. Any way you look at it, it's horrible. It's just another way for Bischoff's kid and Hogan's kids to get involved. They obviously can't make it on their own. Brooke has a music career, apparently, that Dixie wants to allow her to work on at the same time as being on TNA. She's going to be the executive of the Knockouts division. This is just such a bad idea. I mean, I seriously think Dixie Carter sometimes does the worst stuff possible just to shock people. Because I can't see how, in her mind, this is a good idea. Um, just a completely horrible idea. If they wanted an executive for the Knockouts division, bring back Karen Angle. She was doing a great job at that. So anyways, that's just some news for the week. On to TNA. Bobby Roode comes out, says RVD put him through hell, but he won the match that RVD picked. Um, talks about how he's the longest reigning champion, and or he will be the longest reigning champion. And he acts like the fans who are booing him are actually cheering at Roode, <laughs> which was great. And he's going to throw a party next week as the celebration of domination for holding the belt so long. And I think this is great for him. I think it's awesome he's had the belt so long. It means that the belt has more credibility now. It's got stability. And it also makes Bobby Roode look like a real star. And they've really made something with him. So I'm very happy with this. And then he tells Hogan to get his ass out here. <laughs> so Hogan comes out. Of course he gets the best pyro in TNA. I mean, this shit was like the 4th of July for Hogan. Uh, lasted a long-ass time and was just tons of explosions. And I'm just shaking my head like, why? But anyways, I'm being nitpicky here. Rude has a list of demands for his party next week. He wants his dressing room redecorated with champagne. He wants some M&Ms, but only the green ones. So I assume Bobby Rude's been watching Wayne's World 2. Um, he wants gold confetti from Canada for his entrance. Hogan says he hasn't broken any records yet, brother, and he tears up the list of demands. Hogan says next week is open fight night. He tells Rude he's going to defend next week. All the wrestlers come out and stand on the ramp. Hogan says he needs to uh, get the number down to four guys, so he books a match for RVD versus Bully, Hardy versus Anderson, Angle versus Samoa Joe, and a battle royal for the uh, rest of the guys. So, yeah, this started off as a good impact. Um, and actually, I think the entire show was good. RVD versus Bully Ray. Bully wins clean with a diamond cutter. They did kind of sell it like RVD was still really banged up from his ladder match. So, I thought this was fine. Bully Ray advances.
backstage bully is cutting an awesome promo. Uh, he's acting really pissed off. The cameraman asks him why he's pissed. He says he's pissed at the Kardashians for jumping on the anti-bullying bandwagon. Um, Joe Parks comes up, says bully is the fire abyss was talking about. Um, and then he says that, or bully says, stay away from me. So, yeah, I like Joe Parks. Unfortunately, he didn't say his classic line of, you know, uh, Chris, Abyss? <laughs> I think that's awesome. But, uh, yeah, he's they're still doing this thing with Bully and Joe Parks. Then they advertise this guy, King Mo. Um, he's an MMA fighter. He's going to be splitting his time between TNA and Bellator. They show a clip of him talking with Dixie and whatever. It could be good. It could be bad. I just know TNA's track record of bringing in celebrities has been pretty shitty. And I don't really expect much out of this. But if it works for them, that's great. Uh, Gail Kim backstage is complaining about the match tonight, but Madison's ignoring her because she's in love. Velvet and Brooke come up, talk some trash. Then we get the Battle Royal. It has Aries, Crimson, AJ, ODB, Eric Young, Garrett, Rob Terry, Devon, Gunner, Magnus, and I wrote down Devon twice, and Robbie E. Madison comes out during the Battle Royal, and she just stares at the ring, so one of the guys she's in love with is in the Battle Royal. Um, Robbie E eliminates Rob Terry. Uh, then Devon eliminates Robbie E. Nothing happens. They tease that Terry and Robbie E are going to feud, which is most likely what's going to happen, but nothing happened here. Uh, ODB and Eric Young eliminate Crimson. All three of them roll out. So, probably going to continue that feud also. Then it comes down to Garrett, Devon, AJ, Aries, and Gunner. Garrett eliminates Devon, and then the two of them have words. And I'm going to go ahead and say it. Garrett Bischoff is probably going to be the next TV champion. Uh, as sick and twisted as that is, that's probably what's going to happen next. Um, we get a stare down with Austin Aries and AJ. The two of them wrestle each other. This was good. <clears throat> you can see the massive welts on Aries still from a sacrifice match. Gunner eliminates Aries, and then AJ eliminates Gunner to win. So AJ advances. AJ cuts a promo about Rude's title reign. He says that he will end the reign if Hogan puts him in the match. He says him and Dixie are just business partners. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Kaz and Daniels come out. And he says that last week the world saw the types of moves that got AJ where he is. Kaz says, it's just we're just about exposing the truth. We just want to know what is up with the pictures. And then they pull out an iPad. They have a video of AJ going with Dixie Carter to a hotel room. AJ gets pissed off and he leaves. So Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle are backstage. They start fighting each other. It's broken up by the wrestlers. Anderson is watching highlights from Sacrifice on his iPad backstage. Uh, he's talking about the controversial finish. Then we get Anderson versus Hardy. Um, this was decent. Anderson hits a Finley roll, but Hardy rolls him up. And Anderson kicks out at three, so it's another controversial finish. Um, Hardy advances. The same damn crap. As soon as I saw this, I was like, seriously, guys? Hardy kicked out. Now Anderson kicked out. Oh, man. So nobody gets over. Just a waste of time. Then we get Velvet versus Brooke Tessmucker versus Gil Kim for the knockouts title. Um, this was okay, too. Velvet hits the face buster on Brooke. Gale tosses Velvet out of the ring and stills the win. Um, then we get Kurt Angle versus Samoa Joe. This was a good match. Rude comes out for commentary. Joe kicks out of the angle slam. They do some great spots with Joe getting out of the ankle lock. Joe goes for a muscle buster, but Angle hits a sunset flip over him and gets the win. I actually, for a second, I may have been stupid for thinking this, but I thought maybe Joe could win this and he's going to get a push. Um, Angle doesn't need the win. He's already a made guy. But it could help Joe out a lot right now, and I actually thought it could happen. But <clears throat> I also don't know if this is the end of Joe and Magnus, but hopefully it's not. But like I said, good match. Angle, Hardy, AJ, Bully Ray, one of these guys is going to wrestle Rude next week for the title. And then all four guys come out and surround Rude. Like you have AJ and Hardy... Um, uh, Angle and Bully Ray, they're all out at the ring and Rude's just looking around. And then the show goes off the air. So I'm just wondering what the hell happened next? Did they all just walk to the back? I mean, what did the live crowd see? 
Uh, so if anybody was at that show, um, leave what happened in the comments below because I'm just curious how they end these segments. When it goes off TV like that, does everybody just walk to the back like they're friends or something? Like, what happened? But, yeah, that was it. That was TNA Impact for this week. I hope you guys liked the review. I thought it was a really good show. Um, good matches. And just that was all you can ask for, really. I mean, when Hogan came out and made the matches, I was like, wow, this sounds like it's going to be a good show. The matches were pretty good for the most part. They weren't all, like, amazing or anything, but I thought the main event was good, and even the knockouts match was okay. And it set up a lot of stuff for the future. So I was happy with the show. I liked it. I thought they did a good job this week, and hopefully... And they even set up what's going to happen next week, so hopefully they can keep this momentum going into next week's show also. So I hope you guys liked the review. Leave your thoughts on it in the comments below. Subscribe if you haven't. Thank you to everybody who has subscribed. And that's it, guys. So thanks for watching.